Hi guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup here, back with another video for you. And today we are unboxing a brand new cooler that Deep Cool have just sent over to me. This is the Gamax L240 RGB cooler. Now this is a slightly cheaper RGB cooler from them. It's gonna retail between about 70 and 80 pounds from what I've seen, it may be even cheaper again. Um, now there are a few cost cutting savings in here that I do need to tell you before we even start with this video. And that is that it does not come with the included controller. So this will only work if your motherboard has an RGB header. All of their other products that have been RGB so far come with this really nice little clicky controller. So if you haven't got an RGB header, you can use this. To me, that's a bit of a con. I wish they included it. They include it with a £20 fan. I don't understand why it can't come with this cooler. But most motherboard, most motherboards, modern motherboards have them RGB headers, so you should be okay. Um, so we're going to unbox it in a minute. I'm going to show you just a few little bits and bobs about it. Look at all the included accessories. Um, and then I'll show you it in the case at the end of the video. But make sure you come back for the full review. Where we'll be doing some overclocking, gaming benchmarks, blah, blah, blah. So as you can see the cooler on the front here. It's a 240 cooler. Really like the look of the pump. And this is using the uprated pump as well. So this actually has a faster pump than the more expensive Deep Cool Captain. Got the logo on the front here. As you can see... It's got Aura Sync, RGB Fusion, MSI Mystic Like, and Asus Polychrome. I just think there should be maybe a little bit more comment that you do need to have an RGB header for this, especially for people that have bought other products. But they use the same headers, so if you have got some deep cool gear that's already got the controller, or you could just buy another fan, you can hook it up to that controller. So there's ways around it. Look at the side here. You can see RGB. RGB fan, RGB pump, motherboard support, Intel AMD, easy installation. So this supports most platforms. Doesn't support Threadripper like the Deep Cool Castle. Loads of specs on the back here. These are using 12 volt RGBs. We are going to talk a little bit in the video. The differences between the 12 volt RF fans and the CF fans. I'm going to use this video to discuss it because a lot of you have been asking me, and I understand the confusion. It's a lot of money to spend on stuff. So let's get this mofo unboxed. I will measure the tubing as well because people asked me to measure the tubing on the last few coolers um, which should be the same length for all their 240 coolers because Dequal do use slightly shorter tubing lengths it's an either level hate thing, I quite like it put the cooler down to one side so here are the Dequal RF120 fans they go from 500 to 1800 RPM featured these quite heavily on the channel now I know this should be doing a bit of cost cutting that's what they're going to be doing but they haven't got the rubber pads on them now this definitely isn't a sample version so here is the ones that come with the triple pack and the standard no rubber pads I can't see why that would be a cost cutting measure and that's definitely going to be some feedback that I give I'm going to have a little look at the photos on the website behind me quickly Yep, and all the photos online do show it without the rubber pads. So yeah, gonna put that as a little con there, aren't we? Now there is a four pin PWM connector. Now this is the RGB connector and a four pin PWM connector as well. So you, you power these separately. That one fan header, this one goes to the RGB header. We've got two of these included. Next up we have all the RGB cables which I'm going to show you a little bit more in detail in a minute. One thing I also like that they normally plug in here. Oh, this is new. They've changed. They've changed their fan hubs. So this is a different fan hub, but one thing I always like is that Deepcore always provide a four pin PWM fan hub splitter. Let's compare it to the last one. I've lost count of how many of these I got now, but these are the ones that come with our other coolers. Always like that you've got the sticky back, but to be fair, in tighter cases, this this is easier to get out of the way. So that's a pro. Definitely like to see the change there. As you can see, four pin PWM splitter. Really nice that they include that. That means you can buy two extra fans and hook them up. Leave the RGB cables to one side. So there is a huge bag of mounting gear. You have some thermal paste in there. Now there is only screws to fit two fans. So if you buy two extra fans, you'll have to buy some radiator screws. They're M3 screws. You can buy them on eBay. And this is the mounting bracket. So you basically just pop some screws in, pop these little caps on, put that on the back. And there are these mounting plates. Get different mounting plates per system. That you just add to the cooler. 
and then you can fix it down. You don't use this bracket for X299, so yeah, loads of mounting stuff included. I really do like this mounting bracket fits very firm indeed so let's have a closer look at the cooler then so they've gone for that sort of hockey puck style again you see it's got a nice reflective you can see my light from the camera really like that you can sort of put that in any orientation that's one thing i've always liked about the wide range of deep cool coolers they look generally good no matter which way if you've got them coming in that way or that way looks good now on the bottom here there was a sticker but i screwed up the last bit of video so we had to start again got a nice copper base plate that measures 55 by 55 centimeters and you can see there's a few chamfered corners the holes here is where you screw on the little brackets that then go onto your main bracket then we have a three pin fan header which means you and you can take this all the way up to 2550 rpm so that is an increase over i think it was 2050 before then you have the rgb connections now as for this tubing i did measure it it's about 30 centimeters fully braided which is quite short now this will fit in the front of most cases like mid towers. So I'm talking like your Fantex P range, like the P300, P350X, um, and also like your NZXT cases. It has no problem. I normally go in for a sort of loop like that, I think it is or something. So that works fine. Now it won't fit in the front of full tower cases. It probably won't hit your CPU, but all big cases for the last few years have top mounted radiators. So, you know, I prefer these shorter tubing lamps, as I always mention in the deep cool videos, not to bash on NZXT, I just don't like their long tubing on their coolers. Here is the radiator, 240, standard aluminium by 25 millimeters. You can obviously put dual fans on it as well in a push-pull configuration. Moving on to the included RGB cables then. Well, here's the cable that hooks up to your motherboard, and that is a four pin and four pin are 12 volt RGB headers. Now what 12 volt RGBs do is just display one color at a time. That's all they display. Now the other ones, the CF fans that are like on the castle, they don't use a four pin, they use a three pin and they are five volt digital. So they can display numerous colors at a time. Now neither are compatible with each other. So you just basically go over to your motherboard's web website for your motherboard and read the specifications. Gigabyte refer to them as digital headers. Asus put in addressable, I think. So just see how many 12 volt headers you've got and how many five volt headers that you've got. The reason you can't basically cross platform them is obviously because they work differently. But if you plug a five volt into a 12 volt, you're probably gonna blow it up. I'm trying not to get too technical, but I'm pretty sure that will set on fire. Okay, it might not set on fire, but it's not good. Okay, so don't do that. So that's the difference. And you have those. Now to hook everything up together, you get this included cable. Now I know this definitely comes with a free pack of RF120s. I know that their extension cable comes with the CF single fans and the CF pack fans as well. I don't know if it comes with the single RFs because I've never bought one and no one's ever commented that it does. So it might do, but I just don't know. And this extension cable, as you can see, so we've got one, two, three, four. So we can hook up our three RGB devices, our two fans and that. And then we've got room for one extra, but you can plug multiple of these cables into each other. I mean, I've ran up to, I think it's eight or nine deep core RG, RGB devices off of that. So I've got the L240 fitted in my Fantex P300 case. We've got a Ryzen 2600 in here. Now installing on AM4 is really easy. You literally just screw into your original bracket. So the bracket's already in place and then you just put this on and just do the little nuts on here, which is quite easy. As for Intel, it's very easy as well, but you will have to hold the back of the back plate or do it outside of a case, which means then it's not gonna slip. Now, as you can see down here, I've managed to wire up another RF120 fan into this loop, but I did have to use the extension cable that comes with the triple pack. The ends of the fans, it's probably not gonna make a lot of sense to you if you haven't bought it, but they're basically opposites, but they do work with that adapter. So buy the multi-pack and you can install more of these fans or run them off each other. So that's gonna work as well. The other thing to notice as well, because obviously I've got the fans in the pull configuration so you can see the RGB. For all my testing, I'm going to have them in push. That would bring my radiator 25 millimeters forward. So we're not going to get the tubes over the RAM so much. And also as well, the radiator being right tight up to the case. And with that extra fan, it's stopping me from being able to move the radiator up and down. I'm telling you, the cabling on this is exactly the same as the Deep Cool Castle. And when I had the castle installed, I was able to easily sort of loop these cables sort of went just under your memory, so they're not gonna get in the way of RGB memory. Anyway, it's a bit hard to see because I'm trying to make sure you can see the light as well, but I don't wanna, you know, light it up too much. But as you can see, you can see the radiator in there as well. So really happy with it so far. Gonna do a bit of overclocking, gonna come back with a full review, probably crank it up to 4.2 gigahertz. 
Gonna actually look at doing some gaming tests with that and then probably see what sort of temps we get when we're video editing as well. So if you wanna see that video, if you wanna see just all of this a bit more, or if you wanna just see all these RF120 fans or any of the Deep Cool Ranger fans, make sure you go over to my channel because I've got pretty much videos on all of their stuff at the moment. Anyway, that's it from me today. If you like the video, tell me why. If you don't like the video, tell me why and I'll be back again real soon.